El Shaddai International Christian Center London is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. We are a multicultural church with over a thousand members from more than 55 different nations. Our meetings are family oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bienvenidos, familia hermosa. Es un gusto que estemos todos juntos nuevamente. Los invito el día de hoy a disfrutar de nuestra programación, pues sé que será de mucha bendición. Somos sus pastores Estrella y mi esposo Ramson Mumba. We're so glad you could join us for today's broadcast. Our prayer is that as we continue to teach the Word of God with simplicity and understanding, the revelation that you are getting will begin to bring you to the place of breakthrough. You know, every breakthrough in life is nothing but a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. Once you receive the word of God on any particular challenge, then it's no longer a matter of if, it is simply a matter of when. And that's what we're believing God for today, that the spirit of faith will rise up on the inside of you and you will walk in the fullness of your inheritance. And we look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. There was an experiment done uh, many, many years ago where they took 10 babies and they fed them but never touched them. And then they took 10 others and they cuddled them and fed them. The ones who were fed but were embraced and given human contact they thrived and they matured, whereas the ones who had the same amount of food, but they were deprived of human contact, they died, most of them, in a state of depression. And those were just babies. And so there's an attachment that comes. And for example, uh, if you have ever had a, 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 an issue where maybe someone... Um, was placed in care. Maybe they are in foster homes or they, they were abandoned at birth and, and they never developed that bond in the first maybe nine to ten months of their life. They, they, they find it difficult to bond or to be attached with somebody else. And one of the most crucial things that you should do as a new caregiver or parent is to learn how to form an attachment with that child. Because the child at the beginning can never 
are of an identity of its own, it literally believes that it is one and the same with its mother. That's why when you leave a baby alone and the mother moves out of the room, the baby panics because it has no separate individualistic kind of identity from its mother. It will never do that until maybe after a year. It will see itself like the mother and that's why only the mother or the father, if he's close enough, will be able to bring peace and security to that child. The attachment. But something else happens as they begin to crawl. And this is where the pain of the mother comes in. Because what happens is the mother is now so used to that attachment. It's not just the baby needing the cuddle. The mother is enjoying this. <laughs> That's why some mamas breastfeed their kids till they are four. It's not because the baby needed the milk. It's because the mother needed the cuddle and the closeness. I'm preaching better than you are in many. If your son can go outside and play football and he still comes and breastfeeds, there's something wrong around here. <laughs> so now there comes a time when the toddler starts walking, starts crawling rather, and notice that is the season that the mother's pain begins. Because the mother is still expecting for the child to be attached, but the child, by its very nature, must start walking away from the parent in order to become a separate person. We have all these erroneous ideas. Uh, we see the picture of, you know, a baby taking its first steps, and usually the parent is in front saying, come over here. No, babies don't start walking like that. They walk from you. Anybody, any of us who've raised, hello somebody, we know they don't run to you. They start running away from you. And, and it's not just because they want to walk, they are trying to establish a separate identity. And the pain of not knowing how to handle the fact that we just used to be one. Wait, because I'm going to apply this to your relationship with your mate. When me and Peter first hooked up, uh -huh, we're, going, we're coming over there. <laughs> so the mother now is in pain because what happens is she is cherishing that bond, but the very nature of a separate individual identity demands that instead of the child just being bonded, which brings security, if it's ever going to be another human being, it must get away from the nest of its mother, just like the eagle has to kick the eaglets out of the nest, even though it loves them. The challenge is most parents don't even kick their children out of their life even when they are 45 years old. You are going against nature. That's why you have got some adult imbecile. Boy, we're going to get to this. But as we begin to understand the nature of this, look, look at this. There are certain things that must take place in the developmental stages of the child to the place where not only are they... So first of all, they are bonded with you. Secondly, they are trying to run away from you. Thirdly, when they realize that you've given them the liberty to become themselves, then they can be secure and play with others and still come back to you because they know who their parent is. Some of you parents can't even allow your kids to be kids because you want to play with them all the time. The kid just says, I want to go ride my bicycle with my friends. You don't like me anymore. You leave me alone. Look, let the child be a child. Find you some other older friends. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you tired of all day long listening to Google Goo Gaga? <laughs> you want to have some adult conversation. Some of you haven't had an adult conversation in 20 years because your friends are your children. No wonder you are all messed up in your head because you haven't had adult perspective. And the world looks different to a child than it does to an adult. I've met so many people who refuse to grow up because they think they can go through life at the push of another through the revolving doors of life. Notice this, but it's impossible for you to become secure 
if you never developed the attachment, the sense of security, and the sense of healthy independence from your parents to assume your own identity. That's why most of our problems start when we are kids. Because adolescence is exactly the same repetition of that process. Young adulthood, when you are now by yourself, you, you don't really know whether or not you believe God if you've always lived around people that make you conform. That's why some kids get to be wayward when they get to uni because for the first time now they are a free, separate individual without somebody watching them to see whether or not they are high. Can I, can I preach about, can I talk about immigrants? That's why some of you who came from strict backgrounds as an immigrant, all of a sudden you got to London, now you're getting wise, you're getting so drunk so quickly, you are all over the place because you were, you were scared that Uncle Festus would beat you up if you acted the way you act, but now because you don't even understand that freedom comes with responsibility, the first show and the first attempt and the first opportunity to be free and not be contained, you, you run wild and you ruin your own life. Maybe you are not so saved. Maybe you act saved because you're scared of the people that you are attached to and their rejection and the consequences. So here are the three important things that must happen before we even deal with boundaries. Number one, you must have the ability to be emotionally attached to, uh, to others, yet without giving up a sense of self and your own freedom to be a part. Some people, they cannot be in a relationship without losing themselves. If you are the kind of person who loses yourself because you're with Jimmy. So we ask you, anybody ever seen Runaway Bride, the movie? They ask Julia Roberts, how do you like your eggs? She don't even know. She liked eggs the same way that whichever man she was with at the time liked them. So if he liked scrambled eggs, she liked scrambled eggs. If he liked poached eggs, she liked poached eggs. If he liked fried eggs, she ate fried eggs. Why? Because she lost herself in the man she was with. You don't even know how you like your coffee. So if he takes... White with two sugars. You have to wash my hand because that's not. Because some of you drink syrup. <laughs> you don't drink coffee. <laughs> you are going to put the whole plantation in your cup. <laughs> but notice this. If you, if you just, you look around and you are in a relationship that causes you to lose yourself, this is not a healthy relationship. Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery, and instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today you have the blood bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute, hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. 
You have to make an emotional connection without losing yourself, your sense of self, and secondly, in that equation, without losing the freedom to stand apart, without losing the freedom to say, okay, uh, I know we are an item and all of that, but you know, you want to watch that movie. I don't really feel like watching it, so while you watch it, I'm all read. And, and if you say that, it doesn't it disintegrate or deteriorate into a crisis, because you don't like me now to watch the movie with me. No, this is too, too much. It's okay, we are two different people. You can watch the movie while I read in the other room, it's okay. I can go shopping while you sit in the sun. We don't have to be joined at the hip. Okay, 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 okay. Am I helping anybody? If you flunk this first test, you are not even ready for boundaries. Second thing that has to happen in order to fulfill the prerequisites for boundaries is your ability to say appropriate no's to others without fearing the loss of love. Can you say no without thinking, she'll dump me, he'll dump me. They will change their behavior. So really, because of your fear of loss, you conform. Notice, we talked about this last week, you can't be in love if you don't have the choice to say no. You can't love anybody if there is no option. If he's the only man that you could marry, most probably you married, you made a poor choice. Now, let's, let's talk about marriage. Marriage is a choice. You make a good choice or a poor choice. Here are the things. If you make a poor choice, you're going to have to work harder but it can still work if both of you are committed. If you make a good choice, you still have to work, but it'll be easier. But it still work. Thank you for your enthusiasm. But nobody said work can't be fun. We're gonna get to this, so, so you don't start losing your notes. No, no, look at this. Can you say no? And if you're in a relationship and you can't say no without feeling like you've just betrayed the person and literally sacrificed after all I did for you and you're not saying no, that's not healthy. Because now I know that the things you do for me, you don't do them just because you love me. You do them as an investment so you can make withdrawals whenever you need a favor. And love has no agenda. Love literally means I'm going to bless you in spite of what I'm standing to inherit from it. We're going to deal with that because people manipulate you by giving you things. If every time you receive anything from somebody, you feel like you owe them, let me advise you to take the gift back. Because they will make sure they give you enough stuff to where you will owe them your own body. They will literally say, you have to sleep with me because after all the rent I pay. And, the, amen, and there is so much that the sense of obligation will lead you into that you wouldn't have otherwise even done if you had the propensity and the capacity and the wisdom to say no. Who are you so indebted to that every time they call you have to jump? Every time they ask a favor, you got to give it. Why? Because you, you, you remember the way I bailed you out. I mean, when nobody wanted to touch you, it was, it was just me. You already know this is not a healthy relationship. Particularly men. Men are good at giving things but not giving themselves. Oh. Is that preaching right there? Uh, right there. Shall we see where it is right, right there? Amen. <laughs> and, so, and so the man can't understand. I went to work. I, I worked hard. I brought home the bacon. I mean, I make good money. I give you everything. I mean, what else do you want? This woman can never be satisfied. And the issue isn't that she wants things. The woman wants you. 
And if you are not emotionally there, I don't care what you give her, she still is running a deficit. Don't worry, brothers, we're going to fix that. You remember, <laughs> I, I am an equal opportunities rebuker. I hang in there, dog, I got your back. You know the way we do it in the, in the, in the hood. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, amen, brothers. So now, you are so tired, and I just can't figure it out. What does she want? It's, it's more precious for you to sit and watch the movie with her than it is to work an extra shift. It's amazing what a woman can put up with if she knows she's got you. Boy, I'm preaching better than you are, amen. She'd live with you under the bridge if she knew she had you. <laughs> so, so if you are if you are so young, ladies, if you are so young and, and you are still thinking about, I, I need a man with a fat ride. Listen, when you get home with that kind of man, if he cannot connect with you emotionally, you will not be satisfied while you ride in his Lamborghini. So better to find a man that loves you for you and hasn't got a mansion, but you have his heart. Ooh. Now, brothers, let's fix that. <laughs> Anybody gonna touch me around here? Touch me, brothers. Touch me, brother. Let's fix this, brother. Let's fix. Let's fix this. Do all right, I got. Amen, amen, amen. I feel you, bro. Amen. Now, let's fix this. A man will never come after you like that if you are not worth pursuing. How do you disqualify yourself from being pursued? When you disrespect him and compete with him and prove that you are equal. Because he don't want nobody that came to compete. He wants somebody that came to complete. You, you heard the joke, don't you? He wants somebody that's available. Did you see how he died? <laughs> Let me tell you the joke to illustrate this. God said to Adam when he created him, he said, uh, go and give Eve a, a hug. So Adam went, you know, uh, Adam, you know, said to, to God, what's a hug? Because they'd never hugged before. <laughs> so, so God said a hug is like this. So Adam went and gave Eve a hug. A uh, few moments later, the Lord says, go and give Eve a kiss. And uh, so Adam said, what's a kiss? The Lord said, you see these two things here? You know, right here. Hello, somebody. See, some of you can't even kiss no dog. You need to. Okay, okay. I'll leave that alone. Some of you, nobody went, came back to kiss you again because you didn't even know how to kiss. The first day they kissed you, you slobbered all over him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave that alone. So, so God said, here's how you kiss. You use these two things and mwah, hello somebody. And, uh, and so God said to Adam, uh, go and make love to your wife. And God explained the mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> of that operation. But this time, Adam came back with a question. Adam said to God, what's a headache? <laughs> okay, those of you who are not married don't know the answer. We're so glad you could join us for today's program. Our prayer is that the Word of God has ministered to you today and made a mark in your life that can never be erased. But before we close the broadcast today, we want to declare the blessing, the favor, the anointing, and the grace of God, not only to sustain you in whatever situation you might be, but also to bring you to the place of absolute victory. And we declare that to be so in the name of Jesus. Gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy. Que Dios los bendiga y nos vemos la próxima.
join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery, and instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have the blood bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.